Hello, and thank you for joining us. In this presentation, we're going to be demonstrating contract generation with activity, the idea of building a contract and routing it for approval. Now, of course, the first question you probably ask is, why should you watch this video? So here's a couple of questions to help you make sure it makes sense. First, do you need to create custom contracts? So, in other words, do you have templates that need to be filled out to be customized for that particular situation, and do you have different templates for different situations? Second, is there a specific workflow required for contract approval? In other words, do you have a particular route a document to take for approval based on maybe even the type of contract, NDA versus MSA and so forth? Third, do you need to track your contracts once they're approved? So after approval has been given and everything is signed off on, is it a matter of also tracking them in terms of expirations and renewals and so forth? If you do answer as yes to any of these questions, then it probably makes sense to watch this video. Now, of course, on the screen you see the workflow that we built in Activity using the Web Modeler, and that's the workflow we're going to be using in our demo. So let's get started. Here we are in Alfresco Share, and of course we're at the Atom Storage Dashboard, My Dashboard. We want to kick off a workflow, so we'll go to the My Activity Tasks Dashlet, and I'll click Start Workflow. And of course, the objective for starting the workflow is to generate a contract. So we're here at the Start Workflow screen, a familiar face appears, and we'll select the Contract Generation Workflow. I click on that, up pops a form. Now this form is what's going to drive the creation of the contract, the population of data inside the contract, as well as the workflow. Now the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is select the contract type. This will drive what template is used in order to build the contract. So I'm going to be building a non-disclosure agreement, so we'll use the appropriate template. Now I'll fill in the rest of the form. Now you'll notice vendor name is red, other fields are black. The reason for that is vendor name is a required field. You also probably noticed when I selected non-disclosure agreement, other fields appeared. So based on the template you use, that may drive the need for additional information. So let's quickly fill out the form. Okay, now from here I can go off and go to the Contract Data tab. Here we've got additional information, not necessarily used for the publishing of the contract, although it could be, but more for also follow-up information. So the department that's requesting it, I can enter a business owner if I want, contract value, I'll put a contract value in. Okay, whether or not the contract auto-renews, this key field may be used to generate uh, notifications, it could be used to generate workflows, so we want to indicate whether that's an auto-renew. And then, of course, the expiration date for this particular contract. And again, keeping in mind, these are sample fields used for follow-up. Obviously, based on your implementation, it would depend on what fields would appear here, given, of course, by the business users. And I'll put a notice period in. The idea here is perhaps 45 days before expiration, perhaps a notification needs to go out or an email needs to get started to review this contract. So once I've entered the appropriate information, I will hit Create Contract to generate this contract. Here we are back at my dashboard. Now for purposes of this demonstration, I've gone off and routed the contract to myself. As you can tell from the activity information, a new contract was generated. So you see my activities, Adam Storage just updated this contract, okay, and this was just generated. And then here's my documents modified just now. So if I go to my activity tasks, here is my task that I've just received. I click on that, and of course this can happen via email notifications or by going to their inbox. So depending on the user, they may get an email notification, they click on it, it brings them to their task, or from their inbox, they can come here as well. You'll notice in this particular contract doc review task, you've got the contract type, the contract ID, a unique identifier that was created for this contract, vendor information, all the pertinent information. I can add some comments, but here's the important thing, the contract. All right, so the contract was created, given a name of the unique ID. Now I'll go off and click Open in Alfresco to review my contract, because of course it grabbed the template, all right, put it into Alfresco, but of course after it went off and did all the data population. And what I mean by that is, as you look at the contract, you'll see all the inserts that were done. So ABC Finance located at, here's the address, the short name if you will. As I scroll down through this contract, you'll see the unique identifier. So this is in the footer 
of every page. And this is, of course, the unique identifier for this particular contract. And of course, based on your needs, this footer or unique identifier might look different. As I travel all the way down, I come down to the signature page. And of course, here is my information that I entered. So from here, I can sign. Now, from this point, you could do all sorts of pieces. In other words, you could have plugins that allow you to do annotations, so you could annotate this document during the workflow process, or you could edit it in Microsoft Word if need be. Really depends on what the objective is at this point in time. Now, if I close this and show you on the right, remember that data you filled out, remember the form and so forth? Here's all of that information as properties of this particular contract for searching. So you'll be able to search on any one of these properties as well. Because remember, I entered the information in that form once. It went off, grabbed the appropriate template, filled in the information in that template after it selected it, put that into Alfresco, and assigned all those information pieces for searching. And here's that follow-up data as well. Remember the auto renew and so forth. Okay. So once I've done what I needed to do, be that editing or marking up, annotating, or what have you, we would go off and send it out. Now the quick thing you'll notice is see how it's A, A, B, C, and so forth. It automatically built the folder structure needed to store the document in Alfresco using business rules. So based on how you would like your taxonomy or folder structure set up, it would automatically build that out. Okay. So again, it created the unique ID and stored the document, did the data population, and assigned the fields. So from here, I'll go off back to my workflow item. Okay, and here's where I am in my workflow item. And I can add again more comments here if I want at the workflow level. And then from here, I can either send it to legal review or send to my manager. I'll send it to legal review. And of course, it's routed to me, so it comes in my next task is legal review. Here's that document again. You can open it up. Here's the contract ID, comments from the last person. And of course, this person can enter comments as well. So you can see it's pretty easy to go off, enter information, grab a template, generate the document, and route it off on its appropriate workflow. OK, what did we do? Well, we gathered data for creating and tracking a contract. We automatically created a contract and inserted data into it. So that was when we put the address in there and the name and all the other information automatically in there. We automatically generated a unique ID for the contract. That way we knew it was a unique contract. We automatically created the folder structure to store the created document. So the idea there is we're able to build the folder structure for where that document is going to sit. And that was done, of course, automatically. We automatically store the document in a simple, smart, and secure repository. So not only did we build the folder structure, but we automatically put the document in there. We automatically assigned metadata to the contract to aid in searching. Because remember, the key thing here is we've entered that information in the form. We want to be able to search it later. Well, that's automatically assigned by virtue of the process. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And feel free to reach out to us to see how we can help you like we help our clients.